welcome to today's episode of Between Friends. I'm delighted that you've joined us and I hope that you'll mention in the chat where you're watching from because we just love hearing where everybody is. I see Jody Worley is saying hello fellow wolfies and if you don't know what that means, well we're going to explain that to you right now because my good friend Angela Wolf is in the house and joining me today for this episode of Between Friends. So welcome Angela. Hi, hey. it's great to see you. And it's great to see you all. So you look fabulous. You look well rested and oh. maybe a little sun kissed. Are you just back from a nice holiday? I am a little sun kissed, wearing some beautiful embroidery, you know, a little r and It's like the best just for a few days and back to work. And I'm so excited to be here with you. And I see, oh. I want to say hi to everyone rolling in too, Woofies and everybody else. <laughs> I know you got to have, we have a lot of folks joining us for sure. And um, I guess, you know, some of the names, Marianne Adams, maybe from Yuma and we have Sarah yeah. J from the UK. We had someone from the, uh, um, from uh, Germany earlier and Risa Branke, she's always the first to arrive <laughs> and uh, she's up in Wyoming. She's always the first 20 to arrive. inches of snow. Oh my. <laughs> Ruthie. <I know. laughs> Hey, Risa, I wonder if you wish Risa. you were with Angela, you know, where she was last week in Florida, right? Oh, my. I know. Well, we have lots of fun things to talk about. We're going to talk about, you know, jumbo designs with small hoops, and we're going to do a new product reveal. But before we do that, I'm going to announce a giveaway that you can participate in. And then Angela also has a giveaway. So let's take a look. Our giveaway here at Dime is the mega giveaway. And you can enter every day, once a day, every day. Now, this isn't going to be one big giveaway. We're going to break it down into six different giveaways. And the first one is next week, April 13th. And you will receive the hoop mat, the stable cut dispenser, and four rolls of stabilizer. Fuse me, ad adhesive sewing wash, and uh, whatever else is up there on the screen. I can't even see water soluble uh, tear, water soluble topping, and the medium tear away. So enter every day, and then I hear on Between Friends next Thursday on the 13th, I'll announce a winner, and I want to show you how you can do it. So you can go right to our website, dzgns.com, and enter, enter there. You'll click to enter, and it'll jump you over to the entry page, right? And you just, you know, fill out that form, and it'll tell you how many days are left to um, the drawing, and you can do it every day. So Angela, tell us about your giveaway. Yes, well, yours is amazing, by the way. So okay. this could be an addition because mine is a giveaway where you can also enter every day. I'm giving away my brand new collection, the Whimsical Collection, which I'm so excited to have with you. And so you can start, it opened yesterday, you can enter every day. And next Wednesday when I'm in Vegas, I'll draw one lucky winner. Uh, to receive this collection. I'm so excited for that. You have to have a giveaway when you have something new and fabulous, right, Eileen? Absolutely. You know, we don't often do giveaways here at Dime. You know, my social media team says, no, we're not going to do that. That's a whole other topic. But anyway, so, but this year, during the spring, on six weeks of running, we're going to have a giveaway and anybody wow. can participate. So, super fun. I think that sounds great. Those stabilizer you, stabilizers you showed, We'll yeah. come, hand, come in handy with these designs here, yeah. by the way. I know. I love your shirt. So the things that we're going to talk about today are where to start on a blank canvas, on a blank canvas mix and match designs, and embroidering on knits and denim. And why Angela Wolf? Well, Angela, for those folks who don't know you, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? I mean, you're a fashion designer. And what else? Well, that's how it all started. As a fashion designer, I design clothes for people all over the world. And then when I received the position of host of It's So Easy TV when it launched, what, let's see, almost over 10 years ago, uh, after a few years of that airing, everyone was like, what pattern are you using? And I thought, well, I'm designing it. So yeah. I decided to change the whole business to make designs that you could sew at home. So I have a pattern collection, an online academy now, and just growing in the home sewing world and embroidery, thanks to you. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, you know, 
In fact, we're going to play 20 questions throughout today's program. So if, and I know many of you probably know more about Angela maybe than I do. If you're part of the Wolf Pack, you might. But um, so I'm just going to go ahead and start with a couple right now. What is your favorite color? <laughs> well, um, I'm just laughing at that because I just had my nieces and nephews here and we had a long conversation about that. And uh, yeah. it's pink. Pink is definitely it. Okay. And what, now your nieces and nephew are toddlers. Yeah. Two so four-year-olds and a five-year-old. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so what was their opinion of favorite color? What were they well, about? Kira says pink is her favorite unless it's a purple day. And <laughs> Sienna likes orange unless it's a blue day. And Carter likes all of them. So it was really hard to buckle them down to one color. Yeah. But definitely pink and black are my two. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. They're so fun. So I know you know Arnell Burroughs. She says hi. hi. I know and her favorite color. Her favorite color is purple. Is it? Wow. See, you know, wow, I'm really impressed with that. And look, we have Lillian tuning in from Puerto Rico. Welcome, Lillian. Love having people from all over the U.S. Uh, and it's outreaching areas. So what else do we want to ask Angela? Well, how about um, what's your favorite Netflix Netflix binge season? Oh, gosh. So. I'm going to have to confess that I don't have Netflix. I got rid of it quite a few years ago, and I started – I know. I, can you believe it? But yeah, no. I have been binge-watching Yellowstone. I did not want to watch it. It was so graphic, and then all of a sudden you're, like, stuck on it. So believe it or not, I got sucked into that one. But yeah. to be honest, I really love just watching the creative shows, and I end up binge-watching on YouTube. And I watch shows like yours – uh, uh, anything in the creative realm. I love okay. that. Okay. Well, that, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, so favorite comedian, comedian, Betty White or Joan Rivers? Oh, Betty White for sure. Are you kidding? Like I grew up with that show on in my house. Was it, uh, Golden Girls? <laughs> yeah. Okay. My mom loved that show. Definitely Did, Betty White. Oh, and you are speaking of family. You are the oldest of five. Mm -hmm. yes, so how many I'm, years between the top and the bottom? So my youngest sister, which was here now, we are 10, almost 11 years apart. Okay. So at the end of the year, I always know my age, and then I go down to her age, and then yeah. I add two years for all the rest. <laughs> right. There you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm the oldest of six, and we're 12 years top to bottom. So that's pretty close. But I don't know. Year, it's... We go one, two, three, all year apart, and then six years, and then four years to the twins. They're the last. Well... That's kind of reverse here. I was first, and my brother was five, four, five years later, almost six, and okay. then it goes every two years. So we have a lot in common, Eileen. Yeah, we do. I know. That's awesome. And okay, and we're working here. Remember? Okay, let's oh, go back to work. Oh, yeah. Okay. So um, <laughs> let's talk about her collection. So you have this brand new collection with dime. Oh my gosh, Eileen, I'm so excited for this collection. But not only that, this is the third one that I've done with you because you guys are amazing when it comes to, I don't know how to digitize, I don't know how to do all this. And you are so helpful when it comes, I'm like, Eileen, I've got this great idea. And she's like, well, let me see it. Yeah. <laughs> it's fantastic. This new collection, though, has been a work that is, it's loosely, what's the, correct terminology. I've been hanging out with four-year-olds. Nice. The density is very loose on it, oh, okay. but it still looks great. So yeah. uh, there are so many different collections you can put together. You can use a smaller hoop, five by seven. In fact, many of them fit in a four by four, but five by seven, I'd recommend. Right. Uh, easy to embroider. I used your vintage thread on this. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, and I just, I'm so excited for it. Yeah. That vintage thread, you know, it's kind of a you know, funny name, right? Vintage. So is it just old? No, it's not old. It just means, you know, we call it retro thread. It's just a throwback to um, a cotton, what a cotton look, you know, a matte look. So instead of the sheen that we normally enjoy with exquisite 40 weight, this retro thread has uh, a dull finish and it's just, you know, a, a different look, right? It's not good or bad. It's just different, but no. it's, 
Yeah, it's 40 weight. And so you said um, it's like a loose digitizing. Well, we wouldn't really call that loose. We would call that light digitizing because, you know, and the beauty of these designs is they're, they're soft and fluid. So they're really comfortable to wear, right? Well, Eileen, even this is athletic wear. I'm, I mean, yeah. ever since the COVID days, it's like leggings yeah. and athletic wear. So all of my fabrics are like, this is mesh that you could put on leggings. Look, at it stretches. Yeah. Uh, I've been wearing, if I wear this top anywhere, my husband said it's going to walk on its own. So I make sure I wash it at least every day. <laughs> but it embroidered beautifully on here. Yeah. And this is like a, you would think is kind of, a, I don't know, a tricky fabric to embroider on. And I love it. it I throw it in the wash throw it in the dryer. So it goes all the way from here to denim, to vinyl, to yeah. leather, you name it. Right. It really does work. And of course, well, we'll address that later, but the answer to that, how do you make that work is the stabilizer that you use, right? Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and take a look at where do you start on a blank canvas, Angela? So to be honest, I start with a pencil and a piece of paper. I like to sketch my designs just like I always have for fashion. And then I start adding some of the embroidery. In fact, that's how we start our collection, my collection with you. I send you a sketch of an outfit with some yeah. embroidery. And so my blank canvas is a piece of paper. And it might start with a beautiful model. At least I'm a terrible sketcher, but I think it's beautiful. <laughs> or um, I'll just make a block of a t-shirt and kind of figure out where everything's going to go. But for me, it's it's really visual on doing a little sketch first. Okay. Well, I don't want you to think I'm not paying attention. I'm actually opening my software so I can share with everybody what, um, after you sent me that sketch, how it evolved from there, right? So. Oh, yes. Yeah, so I have to um, I have to share my screen. I, I kind of neglected to do that the proper way when I came into this platform. <laughs> so everybody, maybe uh, Angela, why don't you talk about something? <laughs> Take me off screen so I, I can will, do this real quick. Well, actually, I can see so many people. I it is so awesome to see all the familiar faces here on the live show, Eileen. This is what's so great about the sewing and embroidery industry is that we are all in the same there's reen great to see you reen i've seen all of her work with you so i mean it's just so much fun so by the way how do i come up with these ideas and how do i know it's even going to work well first of all once i have the design i'll embroider on a few different fabrics and then i throw it in the wash to see how it looks to make sure that it lays the way i want to because some of my garments are loose these this is a little tighter but the sleeves are loose and if this all was all puckery i wouldn't want to wear it uh, do I want it on a denim jacket? I mean, all those things. Now, I don't know, Eileen. I know not everyone has a machine where you can scan something in and see what the image looks like on the fabric. That's right. been a game changer. But for me, it starts with a sketch and a lot of testing and a little more testing. <laughs> right. Okay. So um, how about, Gloria, if you go ahead and share my screen, I don't want to embarrass you, but this, uh, Angela, but this is literally what Angela will send me. <laughs> she, you know, just a sketch. And this is just how I, we used to work with Nancy Zeman. So it's common for design companies to just receive ideas from artists that are, you know, sketches. And, and that's where we start. You got to start somewhere. Right. And then from there, um, I, you know, once we get the designs digitized and so forth, and there's lots of email back and forth. Right, Angela? <laughs> It's kind of a, a, a long process. But then I start in software and I sketch this tunic, which you may think, oh, gosh, I can't draw like that. Yes, you can. Really. It's just very simple to do. I'm not going to demonstrate that here. But <laughs> then I start to bring in the embroidery designs uh, kind of one by one and see, you know, where would they go? What area would they embellish? And I just keep building and I do this, you know, by not changing the size of the embroidery designs at this time. I just want to see what they would really look like uh, on a garment. Now, of course, this tunic is not two size, right? All of that kind of comes a little later. But, you know, it's all about the plane. Wouldn't you agree, Angela? Yes. And, you know, what's really cool and I think even this third collection even went even smoother. The first one, you know, I wasn't really, had no idea what I was doing. I'm getting a little yeah. better at my sketch <laughs> and knowing what to even ask for. What right. you put together, what you're doing exactly here, is exactly what, let me just share this camera real quick. It's right, okay. um, 
is exactly what I gave to Cindy King and a mm -hmm. few other Wolfpack members. We were just chatting together. And she took your sketch that you just showed with that software mm -hmm. and made this. It's almost exactly what you would put together. She even has trim on the bottom, on the sleeve, everything like that. And that was all from what you did there. So yeah. we go back and forth. Yours is much more polished. Mine's just the sketch. But you nailed it on this one, oh. Eileen. I got to oh. give you and your staff a high oh. five. When you sent over the finished uh, designs, yeah. the colors, and everything, and I was like, oh, my gosh. If I could do a flip-flop, I would have done it. But right. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it, you have to build a collection, right, Angela? Many times an artist like yourself, you send a couple ideas, like maybe four or five, six, seven sketches. Well, a collection's got to be at least 20. And we have to think about the areas of a garment that you're going to fill because we don't want 20 roses that are just a rose, right? <laughs> and if you've been well, you never know. <laughs> a long time, then you know what I'm talking about because that's what it used to be, right? A collection of roses was literally 20 yes. roses. <laughs> with maybe Well, and you know, Eileen, you, you taught me a lot because the first collection we did together, Touch of Lace, mm -hmm. I think I sent you, I wanted like, I don't know, 200 designs in there. You're like, tone it down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Walk it, it back was, a little. Oh, it was still robust, though. It was very uh, robust. And it, well, but we all learn, right? So let's see. Yeah. You know, it's all good. You have a lot of Yellowstone uh, fans in here. People are saying, yay, Yellowstone <laughs> and Arlene Circus. She loves uh, Yellowstone. I have to tell you, I gave up on Yellowstone. It's just so violent. You know that? It was violent. It was vile. It was like, I don't even, and the characters, so this is one thing you have to be very careful if you watch that bloody show, is yeah. don't take up the language. Because, you know, did you ever watch Downton Abbey? That was my, that was my major binge watching yes. show. Yes. Big time. Yes. And I would, at the end of the day, I would go to the kitchen, I would have an accent like this. Hey, Ron, <laughs> could you pour me a glass of wine, please? And he'd say, you have to stop watching that show. <laughs> so Yellowstone, you definitely don't want to pick up on the verbiage or you might get kicked out. <laughs> yeah, Definitely. Definitely. But, you know, I was always drawn into the beautiful landscape there. Oh, it's just so gorgeous. Uh, I think that's what the generous. landscaping and the horses. It, that's my favorite. Yeah, it, it's so whatever. Anyway, okay. <laughs> so that, that's kind of how we start. Right. And, and of course, on this tunic, like, you know, you'd have to have a giant hoop to do what I just showed in, in the mm -hmm. software. Maybe we bring that image back up on screen. And, uh, but you can also do this, Angela, I think you do this on your Luminaire right at the machine, machine also, don't you? That's really how I combined, and I've been doing it even since the Dream Machine days where you can scan in the fabric. I am a visual person, I want to see it right on the fabric. And placement's a big deal, especially if you have big flowers, you know, you, got, yeah. <laughs> you don't want headlights going on. So I will scan in the fabric. So how I started this, I did the same thing. I embroidered a couple of the bigger pieces Mm -hmm. Rehooped, scanned it in. So even on the top that I'm wearing, I have designs. It's not asymmetrical. I did that on purpose. I wanted it to be different on both sides. Yep. I just scanned it in. And then even right. this in the Luminaire, I just did rows right. of rows and just mm -hmm. embroidered it. It, it. For me, that's the easiest way. And, and it's just no brainer. And of course, you're working on flat fabric. Yes. Yeah, so which, you know, truth be told, makes it really easy. For, the, for those of you who think, you know, oh, sewing is so hard. Well, actually, embroidering on flat fabric is a lot easier than embroidering on a finished garment. Exactly. I always, what I do, even for this mesh top here, and even mm -hmm. all the outfits I've ever done with you with the other collections, I will chalk in. So for this, I chalked in my pattern right mm -hmm. on the mesh. So I cut the mesh a little bit bigger. I don't cut out my full pattern pieces because you don't know if it's going to shrink at all. I made that mistake once. That was yeah. not good. So I chalk in that design mm -hmm. and then place the designs. So even if you didn't have that scanning, you could print off, you know, pictures of it or right. whatever and place yeah. it where you want it to go. Mm -hmm. Well, Chris Mannion has a, a question. It says, how many hours with the rehoopings on the blouse that you're wearing? Well, it depends. Does it include sending wind to Walmart for needles? <laughs> so, Eileen, you'll love this. So, I was working on this. This is like the third one of these because I made a couple of them. And we were at the cottage, and I said, okay, I can embroider. So, I brought my luminaire. I am embroidering in front of the fire. It was fantastic. But I only had one older needle in the machine. And I actually used a number 14 on this with the, with the thicker thread. 
Oh. Believe it or not, yeah. yeah. And so when I was using the smaller needle, it did not like this mesh fabric. So we don't have any sewing shops, or at least not too many, up where we are. I have one great one, and they were closed that day. So I sent him to Walmart, and he came back with all these needles. <laughs> so if you take that trip that took an hour and a half out of it. There you go. I think this took, well, it was two days of embroidery, but I didn't embroider the whole time. So I would say probably maybe eight hours. Oh, okay. Well, on a one needle. Yeah, on a one needle, right. Because, you know, it sometimes <laughs> it takes more time to change the spool than it does to actually do the stitching, correct? It, absolutely, it does. Yeah. But it's and then I, I mean, decide where the designs are going to go. You know, that takes me a few minutes and I think right. about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, you know, you're a busy woman answering a million questions so throughout <laughs> your day, I'm sure. So, but, I you mean, know, look, you're wearing it every day. I, <laughs> I am. It's my everyday outfit. That Chris, that was just up with you uh, here. Yeah. She embroidered the back of a shirt. I just saw her in Puyallup in one of my classes, and she. Okay. Um, I did this new pattern called the traveling tank. It's just super casual. You can wear it to the beach or whatever. Yeah. She upped her game and added embroidery all over the back. It was absolutely gorgeous. Wow. Absolutely gorgeous. Wow. So I would love like to know from her. How yeah. many hours did it take you to do that? Because I forgot to ask you. I got a great photo of it, but I forgot to ask her how many hours it took her. So I would just love to know. How about that? Okay, yeah. And, you know, we don't, commercial embroiderers, it's all about stitches per minute. And for many of us who are home embroiderers, who just love this hobby, we don't really take that into consideration, right? Right. <laughs> we just love what we do. And we want a beautiful result. That's the key. It's, you know. If you're a quilter, you know what I mean, because, oh, man. <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Arnell Bur uh, Burrow says, Angela is so talented. Oh, love you, Arnell. Mm -hmm. uh, and Carolyn Booth says that she loves it. You make it look so easy. Well, you do make it look so easy, but you also share your skills and the how-to with people so that they can also have success, right? Yes. It's great to see you, too, Carolyn. Um, actually... I met Carolyn years ago. I don't even know how many years ago. I want to say at least 10 or maybe even 12 or 13, way back when we did events with all brands. I saw her there and, and with Reen and that whole group. And, and I learned a lot about embroidery from them. What they yeah. did was absolutely gorgeous. But you know, Eileen, I have to just, and, and I'm being totally honest, this isn't just trying to like give you like a high five. I learned almost everything about embroidery from you. And that was from way back when I first met you. I think it was on It's So Easy that I met you at Craftsy with your sister and right. things like that. So I've learned so much from you. And you give, I think, the best, well, you had a ton of best tips. But I think the best one, because I love big hoops, and you're like, only use a size hoop that will work for your design. That's the best success for embroidery. Yeah. Well, and ever since I took you up on that, uh, <laughs> I still like my big hoops. But <laughs> I, I it's so too. true, though. So true. Yeah, it is. If you're struggling with puckers and that kind of thing, it could be because you're just using a hoop that's too big. I mean, there's lots of factors, but, um, you know, you do get the best results with the, the smallest hoop available for design. Now, if you're doing stuff like Angela and I are doing, you're not doing a five, four by four, or five <laughs> by seven or rehooping for everyone. No way. But anyway, uh, you know, and I have to give a shout out to my good friend and co colleague here at Dime, Deborah Jones, because boy, she is really our in-house expert. And when I have an embroidery question, that's who I go to. So Many of the things that you've probably read on my blog and so forth through the years, and I mean years, <laughs> so many years, you know, I, I learned from Deborah Jones. So we're blessed to be in, a, in an industry where we all are so willing to share this knowledge with each other. Absolutely. Right. Deborah has that great, well, I, I've seen her at many shows. I've learned a ton from her as well. And I, a couple great ones I'll share in a little bit, but she has that great wheel um, oh, where you comments. can like, if you don't know what you're going to. Embroider. There you go. Right. Yes, yes. I know. It's the best. You know, you spin the dial of fabric. There's fabric listed out here. And then in the little window, I guess I don't have the front one lined up right now. In the little window, it tells you exactly what kind of stabilizer to use for a specific fabric as you can see so yeah, yeah it's a, it's awesome and i have well, i always have one wherever i'm stitching so at home i have it and of course here we sell them so there's always one here but you know even the experts like angela and myself like we forget right you know we're 
grabbing a roll of white stuff and maybe we, we didn't use the right one. And when I am in doubt, I, I check that compass and see what Deborah's recommendation is. And it's powerful. <laughs> She, that's my favorite. I see Deborah here. Hey, Deborah. So, Deborah, I got to share. One of your, the best tip that you ever gave me was I could not get the wash away stabilizer to disappear as much as I'd like it to because I was embroidering all on tulle. I love tulle and mesh and, yeah. and fabrics, knits, but particularly the really thin that you could see through. And so I saw her at a show one day and she says, You have to use some, now I just forgot it. Um, softener. Thank you. <laughs> I was yeah. like, downy fabric softener. So, yeah. Deborah, I took it to a bigger level. She would, she gave me the percentage, like 12 water to one. Now I just take a whole bowl of downy, put the shirt in there or fabric, and I stir it around, you know, because I don't cook. So I've got all the kitchen <laughs> utensils in there. <laughs> I let it sit overnight and I rinse it out, and it is perfect. So, Deborah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Oh my gosh. And how do you get away with not cooking? How do you do that? Oh my gosh. I know. Wynn loves to cook, so we're good. I cook, yeah. you know, I, I'm good at dishes. Okay. All right. Okay. So Colleen has a question. She says, So are these designs dense enough to use on denim, or will I be able to see the background? Now you have a denim jacket right there. So you want to talk about are yes, we I seeing do. the denim through the embroidery designs? Actually, I can even take this off. So Sharon Moore, I don't know if Sharon's up here today. Sharon Moore mm -hmm. did this jacket. So I'm going to hold, actually, you know what? I'm going to take you to a different camera. Okay. I'm going to take you over here. So speaking of dense, Janet Payne made this, these designs here. Lovely. So this is on, now the fonts are not included. This is her bag that she's let me yeah. have for a little period of time, like a couple months. And you, can, you can't see through those, can you? No. I mean, these, they just look really, really nice. Yep, it's and full she's, coverage. It's just not heavy. Yeah, it's not heavy. So look at these hearts right here. You can yeah. just barely see the fabric in the back, but that's the whole idea. Yeah. Uh, you could, the, where I was inspired for this design or this collection was the biggest trend right now is on sheer fabrics is having gorgeous embroidery. So I was thinking bathing suit cover up, a blouse, things like that. Well, when I gave these designs to a handful of Wolfpack members and said, I want to see what you design. I didn't tell them that. I said, I just want to see what you're going to do. So here you go. Uh, I think that looks great. Here's the wallet with a few other. She pieced these two designs together, even a little bit on a keychain. And here's the jean jacket that Sharon made. I think that looks great. I love how she used these darker colors there. And speaking of bigger designs, let's see if I'll take you out just a little bit. Uh, she pieced all of these these little pieces together. I should have asked her if she, what software she used, or maybe she's in here. She could say, or how she puts all of her designs together. So this is one design here, and then all of these are separate. So you just have to imagine you don't need a huge hoop for this, but those look great on there. They lay nicely. They're not stiff. I think that's the, that should be the biggest word for the day. They're right. not stiff at all. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. Um, so uh, let's see. Kat Garcia wants to know, she just has a question mark here, nylon fabric. So the mesh that you, like your sleeve cuff that we see so well right there in the camera angle. Um, yeah. is, is it a nylon mesh, Angela? Uh, this is, I have to look. It's nylon. Um, I don't remember what percent, percentage mm -hmm. of spandex. I carry it on my website because I make leggings and things like that. So this would be like yeah. mesh that you would have for your pocket for your leggings or mm -hmm. inserts in your leggings. So it's it's a four-way stretch. Mm -hmm. It's very, um, very see-through. And I wanted to be able to make something loose that doesn't look like it's stiff. So absolutely. that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's see. So Ellen uh, Buck says she keeps learning about density. See how, how many stitches are in a size and think how that will turn out. That You know, I think we're all beginning, not maybe not beginning, but we're all getting a deeper understanding of embroidery, right? We've all been at it for a while now. Gee, when I first jumped into this, so there were no lessons, you know? I mean, every like Deborah Jones, she brought all of her commercial embroidery knowledge to the home sew field. So we were mm -hmm. blessed to have uh, her all of her background, but the rest of us, 
We're just trying to figure it out. And, <laughs> um, you know, I, but I also think, you know, our viewers, all of you who are watching, you're getting better. You, you know, you're embracing software, you're learning more and, and we're all better embroiderers for that, for sure. Okay. Let's have some fun questions. What was the last class you took, Angela, in person? The last in person that I took or taught? Took as a student. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> like college? No, I'm just what? using. Oh, oh come on. on. You know, I just take a lot of classes as far as like business, video, things like that okay. for the sewing side and the embroidery side. I honestly cannot say. Okay. It's been a long time. All right. Now, okay. that being That's said, okay. I still watch a lot of live shows to learn yeah. stuff, so I technically yeah. just not a class. Right. Okay. So, how many pairs of scissors are in your studio? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. All right. I'm coming back over it because I have to laugh on that one. Yeah. I would say probably hmm, hundreds, hundreds. Because I've got stacks here, stacks there. I've got my serrated scissors, my big old scissors. Yeah, a hundred. You hundred. know, that would have been a great job for the nephews, the nieces and nephews to count when they get a little older. Yeah, right. You have to be careful, you know, on toddlers for sure. Um, oh, but hey, Karina Paulson says the last class uh, that she took was in Angela's studio. Well, lucky lady. That's well, awesome. and speaking of Karina... Karina uh -huh. is the one that designed the Julie bag oh, that you have a photo of that she offered the pattern and a video to go yeah. with this collection. Yeah. Karina, kudos to you. And yes, she was here last fall. Okay. So all the way from Norway. All the way from Norway. So let's go ahead and jump into um, PowerPoint so you could, I could have it up properly. So you can see the collection. This is the collection and it is downloadable, but we have a special today that includes the software. So the design collection is still downloadable. Of course, the thread we have to you know ship to you. So the beautiful embroidery designs on the back, you see that, um, that handbag now we'll get a closer look at that in a moment but here are the designs all right and we named this the whimsy collection because they're kind of whimsical right yeah Fun. you know when you when you sent that name over i was like hmm i wonder if we should keep it like the other ones touch a lace touch a couture touch a floral well then yeah. 2023 started and let's just say whimsical is the name of the year <laughs> absolutely i mean and they are kind of whimsical they're not formal flowers you know they're just really the type of floral sketches that you kind of want to scatter over a garment. You know, I don't mm -hmm. see, you know, uh, flowers all in a row and, and, you know, like a vertical border, you know, with this collection. I just see fun, whimsical designs. And of course, there are 21 different ones and you'll mix and match and just have a blast. But here's that handbag. Now tell us, with their purchase of the collection, they get this uh, pattern, correct? So I did something a little different this time than last because I have the Angelo Academy where I have a ton of online classes and I thought a lot of people are already in there. Maybe they're in the fashion sewing club and they love to see things show up on their dashboard. So if they purchase the collection, uh, they will have a link that they go to this and then they can have access to the class. So it will be, there's a few things in there. I added a few things about how I did this top, how I hoop mesh, some little tips to get you rolling. And then Karina said, you know what? I would love to do something with this collection. Uh, she loves to make bags. So she said, can I please add a bag pattern? So she named it Julie after her daughter and my sister. So she shows you how to make this bag and you get the pattern. So it, it's all access. You'll have, you know, I say lifetime access, but, you know, I usually just say one year because you don't know whose life it is. So <laughs> you'll have access as long as I'm in business. How's that? Once you're in there. <laughs> And you're going to be here for a while. Hey, but <laughs> our good friend Joanne Banco from Let's Go Sew says, do Karina use faux leather or is that the real thing? Oh, I'm curious. She used, she usually uses marine vinyl and things mm -hmm. like that, but she uses a lot of leather. So, mm -hmm. Karina, answer away. Answer away. But, you know, nice to have Joanne Banco here. Thanks for joining us today, Joanne. It's been a while since we've connected, but always great to hear. Have nice you. to see you, Joanne. Also a good friend, and she does yeah. beautiful embroidery with you, too. Oh, absolutely. My goodness. She's done so much beautiful embroidery. Okay, so um, 
Uh, here's a question. So we're not really sure how many pairs of scissors are in your studio, but would that outnumber or be less than the number of shoes in your closet? <laughs> who, asked, who asked that? <laughs> I'm asking that because that's, mm, I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. <laughs> so if my sister was still here, which they left right before the live show, they're staying in my guest room. And it's usually my packing room. And yeah. I have shelves along all the walls with shoes. So the big, and then here I have a full room of shoes. Well, it, okay, I'm not just a shoe hoarder. It started with fashion shows and I would need certain shoes to go with certain outfits. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, yeah. when I traveled a lot, I need shoes to go with certain outfits. Yeah. And oh, I thought it was marine vinyl. Thanks, Karina. And um, I don't know. I love shoes. Sometimes I just pet them. Yeah. But, anyways, when okay. Wynn's friends come for fishing, the big joke is, the guys will be like, oh my gosh, I'm having nightmares about shoes. I'm never coming over again. <laughs> so I definitely have more shoes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And and I would say that was my answer, um, you know, 10 years ago. And now, mm, not so sure. Well, so, you know, no. Eileen, I have to be honest. I even said to my sister, do you want any of these? Because I wear like the same five pairs every day. I don't travel as much and I've, I like comfy yeah. now. I still have right. the pretty ones if I go somewhere, but right. yeah, I'm with you. You know, as your life changes, you know, less needs for the, for the uh, fancy shoes and the tolerance, right? Oh, anyway. right? Okay, so what's your go-to hoop size, Angela? Which one do you gravitate towards all the time? You know... I would have to say, and I got to think of the exact measurement, but it's like something like 10 by 14. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah, well, I'm a brand ambassador for brothers. So I use, you know, I, I use half by 14. Things. Yeah. Yeah. That is a really nice size. And I think that just is because, but I, you know, I'm tied with that huge hoop that I could do my whole leg with. And I know I have to be very careful so it doesn't like um, pucker when I'm doing it. But, you know, I really, I really don't have a go-to because it really depends on the project. And I learned that from you. Otherwise, but in the old days, it would have just been the biggest hoop I could find. That would be it. Right. Okay. Well, I, and if I'm just, you, I, you know what I love? I love the nine and a half by nine and a half square hoop. Oh, that's just, a good one. Yeah. Yes. Cause I do a lot of like t-shirts and stuff. And <laughs> you know, when you go, like if you're doing a big neckline thing, you know, and it they get so clunky. But if, if I keep it within nine and a half by nine and a half, it's just so much more manageable. And uh, anyway, okay. So, all right. Um, let's see. What's your favorite movie? That's kind of hard. Maybe that changes. Hmm. Well, I just watched Top Gun. That's a big one. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> that was always the favorite from before. Yeah. Oh, I would have to say probably Forrest Gump okay. because I just, every time I watch that, I mean, it's just like, there's so many good moments in that. And then, and then the, I mean, great actors and just, you know, the, well, and then what's the movie that you could watch all summer? This is what you should rephrase it as. What movie could you have on a DVD on your boat that you could watch all summer and you never finish it? That's one for you. Ten Commandments. My husband bought the Ten Commandments one time. I'm like, are you kidding me? It's like, we'll be able to watch it all summer and never finish it. And you're right. You fall asleep every time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, here's a, a question. Um, oh, what? let's see. Well, Risa Ranking, she watched Forrest Gump last night. But Clovis wants to know, did you play the piano for the kids? Oh, Clovis, I did not play the piano for the kids. And this is why because I had a lot of activities for them and I was really worried if I brought in the piano that I would never stop hearing it for four days. So when they get a little bit older, I will. But I do have a keyboard in my studio now and I did let them play that. Awesome. So I didn't know you played the piano. I have for, I've been playing, well, I started the, as an organist when I was like five, I think my mom said five or six. Wow. And then when I was around 10 or 11, I was introduced to the piano and I played ever since. In fact, uh, Monica Gerard, I don't know if she's on here today, but her and I wrote the music. Well, I got her started. I wrote music for the new TV show and I gave her oh. parts of the song and then she took it and made the soundtracks for the show. Oh, how wonderful. I had no idea. So yes. new TV show? There's a new TV show coming out? What's that about? Yes. It is Fabric to Fashion. It hasn't launched yet, but it's a reality style show. 
So, you know, you, you always get binge watching on reality shows. This one, though, is going to be for all the creative people out there because it includes uh, three to four guests. I record them in their studio like you and I are here. So I can see what's in their studio. You'll see people cutting on their dining room table, on the floor, whatever. But I give them a challenge mm -hmm. and then they have a certain period of time to design it and sew it. And we follow along with them wow. and we throw in a few little, you know, hooks for them too. Oh my goodness. Well, it seems like a lot of fun. Do you know when it's going to? Uh, it be should be out soon, but right now it's going to be on Made It Myself TV. And you mm -hmm. can download their app right now. So their app has a lot of my It's So Easy episodes, things like that, that you can just watch. And a lot of other things. As soon as the channel comes out, it will air on Thursdays at 8 p.m. So you okay. just have to stay tuned. 8 Eastern, Central what? Oh, I'm sorry. 8 Eastern. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Well, that's really exciting, Angela. We can't wait to hear all about it. And I imagine you'll be keeping the wolf pack up to date as to when it's going to be released. Absolutely. And, you know, yeah. if, besides going to AngelaWolf.com, if you go to FabricToFashion.com, I have a little uh, thing on there. You can sign up for that specific newsletter to know what shows are going to air and things like that. And there's going to be some embroidery in there, too. You'll be, I think you'll be really excited to see all the creativity. And you know what's cool, Eileen, is watching, you know, I've been given so much. I love giving the opportunity for others to be able to show off what they're oh. sewing or what they're doing. And that this is kind of what this is. I'll bet. I, I, it is a wonderful, it's a, you know, I, it's the third time I'm saying this, but it is a blessing to be able to give somebody a platform and show their talents for sure. Mm -hmm. So Dawn oh, done. And some others like Carolyn, they wanted to know, what is that app again? Oh, can somebody please say the name of the app? Okay. It's made it myself, made it myself TV. Made it, made it myself TV. TV. Oh, there we go. Zena W is typing it in. Made it myself TV. Yep. And you get it. And you could, you can download it on smart TVs. Originally, it launched uh, specific on Vizio. Now, when the full channel comes out, what will happen is the show will air on Thursdays, mm -hmm. 8 p.m. Eastern, and then the show will go on to the app. So once there's a few episodes, you can just sit there and binge watch there as well. So it's a great opportunity. And, and this new channel is going to be outside of the United States. So there'll be other countries. Oh. So it's going to be a really cool opportunity to have a fun show. Yeah. It's been a lot of fun. A few learning lessons, but it's been so fun watching people design something just like this collection here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I gave it to some people, I had no idea what they would put together. And then I was like, wow, I never even thought about that. That's kind of what you'll get from this show. Right. For sure. You know, as a designer, Angela, it is really amazing to see what other people do with your concept, right? You know, and, and these concepts, like this whimsical collection that we're showcasing today, um, you know, is started as an idea, a quick sketch by you. And that process takes a long time for it to now get to market. It, I mean, you, you sent me these sketches when? In the summer, I guess? Oh, gosh. I, originally, it was last March, but then we waited a little bit. And then we, I think it was August. And we were pretty much finished in October, yes. November. Mm -hmm. Photo shoot was took a long time and just solidifying all the other things. But yeah, yeah. it takes almost a year from it, yeah. concept to finish. And and we always think it's going to be a lot less. <laughs> and oh, it yeah. never is. It never I've is. I've learned. I was like, oh, it'll be done tomorrow. Yeah, no, it's not. Yeah, but no, you know, I'm looking at the collection there. And uh, what reminds me of something there, Eileen, on that is I love trims. And that's why the last collection was a touch of couture, which was yes. trims I used for jackets, things like that. Some of those lines, as you see here, on here, you can see on there, you can line those up and trim a jacket or trim the front of your blouse. Or, I mean, there's a, I wanted to make sure there was something that could be trimmed because right. I just love that. It's an like easy your embellishment. Cuffs. Yeah, yeah, like your cuffs. Oh, it's yeah. beautiful. It's perfect for that, for sure. I know. Okay. So, and there's uh, Karina's um, handbag, which is just adorable. And so now if folks purchase the collection today, it, you know, it's a download collection. So you can start stitching tonight. We'll ship the thread to you if you take advantage of that bundle right away. But, you know, it, you can still play with the uh, collection in thread that you already own. But in that download, you're going to get a link to the, the pattern and the video. But that'll be live tomorrow. Is that right, Angela? That's correct. It'll be live tomorrow afternoon. There was mm -hmm. a few little tweaks I wanted to put in there to make sure it was a smooth transition. So um, just to be safe. I would probably yeah. log in Saturday morning, but it'll be tomorrow afternoon. So Saturday right. morning, though, because I was thinking the collection launches tomorrow. 
why don't you just plan Saturday morning and you can pop in there and you'll be able to get through all the videos and the pattern download immediately. So. Right. And, and, you know, that's my bet. I told Angela, oh yes, it launches on the seventh, but then had her here on, you know, Facebook live on the sixth. And so, you know, well, here we Perfect. Are. Yeah, it's all good. So do you approach, I, I guess you don't really approach whether you're going to stitch on knits or denim differently with this embroidery collection, just in the stabilizer, right? Just in the stabilizer and also yeah. placement, like where is it going to go? Right, for sure. And and it, like a denim jacket, I mean, a denim jacket tells you <laughs> where you're going to put the embroidery designs, right? Absolutely. So even Cindy's uh, top here, is it? Well, there's the jacket. Um, Cindy's top is right here. So Cindy King did this. And this is all on just a regular, just a regular t-shirt. I mean, it doesn't have a lot of stretch. Yeah. Uh, so this is totally different than what I would put on denim. But... I mean, look at how nice it lays. Now I have it pinned in the back just to fit the dress form, but she did trim on the bottom. And it really depends what you're using to make sure that it looks nice as far as a stabilizer. You don't want a bunch of puckering and stuff like that. So for me, it just depends. I go with the sketch first, then I go to the knits or the denim, pick the right stabilizer, and then we're good to go. Awesome. Okay, so um, one of our friends, Colleen Rouse, wanted to know, is the thread the matte thread? Yes, and so this is the collection. It's the pastel collection, and that is 12 spools of this matte thread. So it's just kind of a flat look, but it's kind of old school, but it's just lovely. It's a little folk art, right? It looks great mm -hmm. on denim and even your knits, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, and this is still in style, when you yeah. came out with this thread, I was like, oh my gosh, I love this because that was the biggest trend is embroidery on jeans. And you don't want, a lot of times you don't want something shiny. You want something that really looks like the fabric. Yeah. I love designing fabric. And so that's where this thread came in. And I think when I sent this to you the first time, the sketch, I said, I want to use that matte thread. It's going to be perfect for these whimsical yeah. designs. And so my next one is I'm going to put this on a pair of jeans. So you'll have to stay tuned for that. But right. uh, it just gives a whole different look, kind of a retro, but you can dress it up or dress it down. Great. Love that. Okay. Let's get to some other 20 questions. So if you could visit any country in the world, Angela, where would you go? Oh, gosh. You know, I have to be honest. I just love Florida. <laughs> I love Florida. I love the sun in Florida. Uh, it would probably be... I would love to go specifically. I'd love to go to Rome. Mm. Have you been to Italy? No. no. Okay. So All right. but, we work too much, right? <laughs> <laughs> but it's on my bucket list. Yeah, good for you. So, what do you love the most about what you do? Can you can you just name one thing that is your favorite activity of, out of all the hats that you wear? You know. Just being an entrepreneur for all, well, since college, mm -hmm. I think people think you just go in your studio and you design and everything's like, you know, so there's a lot of the business side, like even when I was designing clothes or now, so like 70% is the business side, 5% <laughs> is like your creative fun side. That's my favorite. I love it when I have a meeting cancel or something and I've got just like, or an, an afternoon where I say, you know what, I'm going to lock the doors in my studio and I'm just going to sew. Yeah. I love the designing. I love the creating. If it's designing an, a garment, if it's designing fabric, mm -hmm. I love the designing process. And I, I still truly just love sewing, period. Okay. Well, Retha says, Wyoming is a state, not a country, but come here. <laughs> <laughs> and Amanda Young wants to know, would you go fishing while you were in Rome? Oh, that's, hi, Amanda. How are you? Um, no, I would want to go see the Vatican in those places. But mm -hmm. that's why I mentioned Florida, which is, there's Cindy. That's Cindy's uh, top. This is Cindy King. Oh, lovely. Well, I thought right I there. That. Nice to see you, Cindy. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, fishing, that's why I like Florida, because I yeah. love fishing. But we fish everywhere. We fish in Michigan. We fish in Florida. Yeah. Um, awesome. It's just fun. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. Patty Graves, uh, and this is. Going back to the jacket, can we see the inside of the jacket? I'm really oh. putting you on the spot. <laughs> I don't know, Sharon, can we see? Well, let me just tell you, it's beautiful. So would, why don't I take you, let's see, right here, so you can get a close-up. All right, Sharon, you're on the hook here, but this looks absolutely gorgeous. Mmm, look at that. Beautiful. So she removed all the stabilizer. We don't know what she used. She could have used, she probably used an adhesive 
uh, wash away because I I'm guessing. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. I'm a I don't know if she's on here because she's got her little uh, grandbabies in town mm -hmm. right now. But mm -hmm. I'm going to guess because this is this feels like nothing. Yeah. So it must have been a wash away of some sort. And I would guess adhesive <laughs> because she didn't make this jacket. She bought it and then she right. embroidered it. So the inside looks as good as the outside it sure does that's beautiful you okay know what i like about that eileen is yeah. that you know when i mean i love embroidering on tool we've talked about that on knits it just gives it a different look and a lot of people are afraid to embroider on knits mm -hmm. so i want it to feel like nothing yes. <laughs> i don't want it to look like i've got so you'll laugh speaking of fishing years ago i had uh, we were at a, the key west world sailfish tournament and they always only have men's shirts, but we'd fished it quite, my husband and I. And they said, we have a woman's shirt this time. I'm like, yay. So it was like this little tank top, like one of those wife beater ones. You know, they're like this big and you stretch out. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's what we used to always call them. Mm -hmm. So it's like this big, although it was stretched to here. And they embroidered Key West World Sailfish Tournament right here without stretching it. So when wow. I put it on, it was like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's not what we want on our knits, right? <laughs> right, right. Have to if I still had that, I will definitely bring it on a show just to give you a laugh. Yeah, that would be funny for sure. <laughs> okay. Um, this, so speaking of, you know, all of your entrepreneurial uh, endeavors and the success that you've had, what was your biggest fear before you started your, your business? Did you have a well, I started right out of college. So there's two different fears because I had, I kind of turned my whole business. So when I just got out of college, I was designing, I had my first fashion show. I just met Wynn and he said, why don't you just have a fashion show? So I did. So that was a pretty fearful moment. I wasn't really too fearful about going broke or anything because I just got out of college. So that's kind of a good thing, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> um, no I was fear. fearful of what people would think and would I be able to keep up with demand and you know, you just wing it and see what happens. Yeah. When I switched the business from custom apparel to what I do now, which is Angela patterns and things like that, that was when I had to sit down and kind of, I mean, the software just to, that I purchased just for that yeah. between that and a plotter and stuff was well over $30,000. And it's like, I remember when saying, how many patterns do you have to sell to make this profitable? <laughs> do I have to answer that, right? <laughs> yeah, but yeah do, is that, I, that's not my part of the business that I enjoy. So for that, that was more of a fearful of, am I going to really, well, losing customers I already had that I did custom clothing with that I just loved. I mean, I literally was walking away from that and yeah. trying something totally new. So that was fearful, right. um, definitely. but definitely worth it. Yeah. Well, you sure put your whole heart into it. That's for sure. That and you know, isn't that the key to success, right? To just put your whole heart into it. Well, you know, there's two things. One, I've had a few burnouts in the past, and I remember somebody saying to me, a good friend, if you don't have time to read a magazine, you're doing something wrong because you need, you know, you can't work 80 hours a day. So that was a big learning lesson. Put mm. your family first. Uh, that's a definite one. And you know what? It just works out in the end. And if you don't like what you're doing, then it's not going to be successful. You right. got to love. And I love coming in here every day, yeah. <laughs> even when we had the flood. I mean, this is like my happy spot. And if I want to design clothes, if I want to embroider, it's yeah. all here. So I still love what I do. So I'm just very grateful to have that as a gift, you know? That's great. That is really great. Those are hard lessons to embrace. I mean, I, you know, we read that, we hear that, but to put that into reality, keep those priorities where they should be, is it can be a daily challenge for many of us, myself included. For sure. <laughs> I'm not, I didn't say I was a pro at it. It was just advice. <laughs> right. Yeah. There we go. Okay. So let's see. We have some questions about. Hey, um, there's Sharon Moore is in here. Hey, Sharon. Uh, what stabilizer? She's going to try that, Sharon Moore. Uh, what stabilizer did you use in that jacket? I see you here in the comments. So leave it so we know. Okay. All right. Um, and then I, we had another question. So let's bring up PowerPoint. They wanted to know what is the collection special. And it is the 21 embroidery designs of the whimsical embroidery collection by Angela Jones, 
Angela Wolf. <laughs> Angela and Deborah yeah. Jump smashed together. <laughs> Absolutely. And and the 12 spools of exquisite uh, pastel 40 weight vintage thread for $74.99 plus free shipping, which is super awesome. And let's see. Um, she said, Amy Harris is telling us that Angela, not Angela. Oh, she is. You know what? My embro my embroidery uh, stabilizer, which I have collaborative through you, my brand, yeah. is mm -hmm. your stuff. Uh, that's what she used then. Right. The wash away. So the tear away wash away, I think, probably. Maybe. I don't know. Is that what you, <laughs> is the wash away? Wash away. Yep. Okay. I'm going to guess she used the sticky back wash away. The sticky back wash away. I would think so. Mm -hmm. All right. Well... What else do we have in store? Well, your giveaway is coming up, right? And yes. here, if you could just bring PowerPoint down for a moment while I find our place of where we are. Thank you. Because um, I know we have a whole bunch of other stuff to talk about. And uh, so let's go ahead back and talk about that giveaway um, for a moment. And you, so... Remember, starting today, you can enter into the giveaway. And if our first one is next Thursday, the 13th. That's when we pull the winner of uh, this first week, which is the hoop mat, the stable cut dispenser, and four different stabilizers. So we're, you can enter every day, just once a day. Uh, you can enter on our website. And then next week, Angela, you're giving away a collection, right? Yes, the embroidery collection. And so I just posted it in the Angela Wolf Patterns Facebook group, and I know not all of you are on Facebook, so it will go out in a newsletter tomorrow morning because I was going to announce the collection, but you get to know a day early. So if you're not on my newsletter, just go to AngelaWolf.com, and I'll make sure I have a link in there to the giveaway. It's free to enter. You can enter every day. And next Wednesday, I will draw a lucky winner from Las Vegas. Yeah. Okay, and if you want to know from Dime when that giveaway is happening, um, here's a quick video on how to be notified of, you know, what's happening here at Dime. In this video, we'll show you how to subscribe to a YouTube channel and follow a Facebook page. Let's start with YouTube. First, open your web browser and navigate to youtube.com. Once you're on your home page, search for designs and machine embroidery in the search bar at the top of the screen. Click on it and go to the channel page. Once on the channel page, click the subscribe button. And that's it. You're now subscribed to the channel. Now, let's move on to Facebook. Once you're on your home page, search for designs and machine embroidery in the search bar at the top of the screen. When you find the page you want to follow, click on it and go to the page. Once on the page, click the three dots on the right side and select the follow button. And that's it. Now you're following the page. Thanks for watching. That was a great video. Yeah, we have a great team here, I'll tell you. I didn't do that one, and boy, she's very talented. That's Adriana Mila, and um, she does lots of our social media stuff. She's very talented. So, Angela, I would like to give you a big thanks for coming here today and, of course, for designing this beautiful new collection. I wish you much success with it and hope that we sell tons, that people, that we go to these sewing shows and quilt shows and so forth, and we see people wearing your designs. Isn't that always a good feeling? I love it, Eileen. Thank you so much for having me here. And also, thank you for helping me put together the third collection with you. I just am I'm very excited about this one. And I'm excited to see what everybody does with it. Because like I said, it's the options are pretty much whatever your flavor is. <laughs> right. And, you know, we have uh, another quick video that I'd really like to share with people because we encourage you to post your photos of either our on the house designs or Angela's collection, whatever it is you're stitching. And here's how you can do it so we can find it and share it with everyone. Here is a quick tutorial on how to use hashtags in your design post. First, on your Facebook profile page, click on the photo icon. Select the public option sharing so we can view the design once it's published. Add the image of the design you wish to share. Then add the description related to your design. Then we can go on to adding your hashtags. We suggest dime sew along, 
on the house or exquisite thread. Finally, click Post. Nice. Yeah. So those hashtags, by the way, Eileen, I don't know about you, but um, about once a month, I'll, well, more often usually, but mm -hmm. especially in the evenings, I'll mm -hmm. punch in like hashtag, you can search hashtags, I'll punch in Angela Wolf or Angela Wolf Fashion, and you will not believe the photos that show up that you might have even missed. So I'm going to have to go in and see some of your embroidery stuff that people are posting as well, because it's just fun. It's a fun way to share what you're working on yeah. and and let us. Eileen and I and other designers see what you're doing because we love to see that. Right. Absolutely. And, and we wish people would share more because we actually, you know, we don't find that many. And, and we know from all the downloads of our free designs and the products that we sell that they're using our product, but we'd love to see what they're actually using. So, um, so if you are not a follower of Angela Wolf, I encourage you to do that. And most certainly uh, of Dime also, we most, we appreciate, um, you joining us each week. And, um, you know, we have Facebook live and YouTube live. The same session every Thursday is between friends at one o'clock central time. And then on, uh, the second and third, second and fourth Tuesday of the month, we have Ashley Jones, who does a software success um, hour every Tuesday. And last, this past Tuesday, she did it on my quilt planner. So if you are talking, you know, interested in designing edge to edge quilting for a quilt, that was this past Tuesday's topic, and she's doing part two on the uh, April 28th. So join her. And of course, all of these broadcasts stay on YouTube. They stay on Facebook. You can always rewatch the program. So if you missed any of today's details and some of Angela's great, funny stories. So, you know, you'll want to rewatch for sure. Right, Angela? I, I absolutely. And I love Ashley Jones. You know, by the way, Eileen, your events that you put on, that you that she does many, that you all put together. The Wolf Pack comes to. We have oh. another one scheduled. Uh, we love them. We love the deals that you offer. We love the tutorials. Oh. And the Wolf Pack that's here, everyone that's still here, just leave in the comments how much you love those. It's like our hangout, and we learn so much. So thank you so much for having those, by the way. Oh. Well, you're really welcome. And we wouldn't be here without partners like you, Angela. So we most certainly appreciate that. So at the end of every program, we reveal uh, this week's free design, which is our On the House program Ooh. free design. But of course, if somebody had asked, where do I go? Which of Dime's websites do I go to? Well, the main one is dzgns.com. And you'll find this banner at the top of the page. And you can just click on that pink box in Angela's favorite color, pink. <laughs> of course. Yeah, and it will take you to this page, and that's where you will fill it out. And, you know, you can do this every day, all month long. So <laughs> I hope you um, do that and enjoy it. So without further ado, this is this week's free design. It's a cute little married couple hanging on the moon, uh, waiting for their dreams to come true, I imagine. And, you know, our good friend, Angela, our good friend Deborah Jones is the... Um, creative person who spearheads this whole campaign and she's this in the next couple of weeks we're going to have a little wedding theme with this charming couple doing different activities it's cute huh this is so cute and what perfect timing yeah. before the big wedding season i love this oh deborah that's a great one <laughs> yeah that's kind of what we thought right you know give a little earlier than wedding season so that people can prepare gifts and so forth but very cute very cute so thanks, Angela. It was great to have you here. Always give you a round of applause. Thank you, Eileen. And thank you all for showing up. It's been so much fun hanging out with you. And I cannot wait to see what you do with this collection. Eileen, thank you again and your whole team. Uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. A very whimsical year. Absolutely. We need it. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Well, thank you.